Good morning, everyone. Hey, excuse the mess, but <laughs> thought we would today would take a quick look at the difference between a classic system like this with solar panels up on the roof, as opposed to having solar panels feeding a power station. Basically, this system versus power stations. And there is a lot of different power stations. There's a lot of different systems like this in the world, but I thought we should sort of cover the pros and cons of all that. And uh, we're gonna get into it. Man, that was pretty glitzy. Uh, yeah, we got birds singing out here today. Yep, there. The... Anyway, the system here represents a nice, basic, almost a hobbyist kind of you know solar power situation. But we have a controller, and that's the very first thing that you know a lot of people sort of ask questions about. And in this case, we've got batteries. This could be a house bank, RV. It could be anything. Batteries, but these are storage batteries, and you need a controller package with this type of system because we're going from solar panels, we're coming to our controller. From our controller, we're going to the batteries and they're gonna, this controller is gonna maintain and help to make sure that the batteries are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, depending on how this is wired, we're gonna go from these batteries, of course, to, in this case, an inverter, because we want 110 volt power that we can plug something into and run from our solar package. Pretty basic, that's what it is, but it's, it's large, but it also, has a lot of power. It offers a tremendous amount of power here. This is basically a five kilowatt system. So that's like, wow, yeah, that sounds good, don't it? Yeah. When we step over here to this little guy right over here, this is a power station or solar generator. They, the industry, I don't know, they really are, they're using both names and they're not explaining, you know, if, if there is a difference, they're not explaining it. And there should be a difference, but whether they're sticking to the rules or not of the road, uh, well, I don't know. When you look at a power station, this is everything here, but small and compact in a power station. Now, power stations uh, are starting to get, seems like they're starting to get bigger and bigger. They're starting to get to this size. You know? We just did an all powers a couple of weeks ago, and they had a huge backup battery system to double the capacity of storage. The first problem I think anybody would notice with a power station is basically it's all built into one. So you're, you're into a fixed situation and there's a lot of different limitations to it. Let me explain all that. Uh, because they're small, like let's just use this poor little guy here for an example. He, he is small. Well, this one's even smaller for Fivor, but this one here is a direct it's directly wired from the solar panels. In other words, these two cables coming in, th these two right here, are from solar panel. They're from a 400 watt solar panel. It's coming directly in and plugged directly into the power station. That's it. The power station or solar generator, if you like. This one right here, it dealt, it, it's gonna deal with everything else after that. Sounds great in theory. The problem is, you only have a certain amount of wattage that you can bring in up to a certain a maximum. All your power stations so far, your solar generators, uh, some of them are are starting to get pretty high. When they first came out years ago, they were like 400 watts was like, oh, you know, that's a lot of power coming in or something. You know, really it's not, you know, it's not enough to really give a, a full uh, system. It's, the problem is, when you get into a power station, uh, a lot of times the older ones were 400 watt or some of them were even 200 watt uh, for charge from solar. That was terrible because it would take all, oh, take days maybe to charge that thing up once you had you know, drained it. So it wasn't a good idea, but I understand what, where the industry was trying to you know, come from to where they're going to. And uh, I've got one in the garage right now and it will allow a thousand watts in and that's actually, wow, that's you know, really good. And that's from uh, All Powers, that's the RS, I think they call S2000 model, I believe. Uh, there's also one here from a company called Oops. It will allow 2000 watts in, that is freaking amazing. You know, that's, that's one of the things that makes that power station a real awesome machine. But uh, you know yourself, uh, is it Blue, uh, Blue Eddy, uh, Echo Flow, there's, there's so many different names of, of these companies that are putting power stations on right now. It's, it's getting kind of, uh, it's almost a saturated market with all these different names. And in fact, I just talked to a company this week and they're gonna be talking about batteries and or power stations. Uh, what I'd like to see them do is send me a, a 48 volt, 100 amp rack type, you know, package, that would be nice. <laughs> 
but they're a lot of money. <laughs> this one here is small, but it's it essentially, it'll kind of give us, you know, I guess the answers because the first thing is storage. It has only, it only carries enough to run about 600 watts for about an hour. So that's not a lot of power. Uh, but it's, it's small, it's compact, it's, obviously it's portable. I can pick this thing up and carry it and go camping and, and have some power out there with me to run something. But at 600 watts, you're not gonna plug a, you know, my uh, standard house type uh, coffee machine in, eh, it's not gonna fly, you know, it will not work. And in fact, there's a lot of things that are gonna be too much power for it. But on, on the other hand, you can have a TV, a radio, or CD players and charge your phones, your, your computers, whatever, and run a, a modem system for internet or whatever, satellite, whatever you have uh, off of this. And that would be great. You know, that's, that, that's cool. You know, very cool. The thing is, this can directly plug into solar. Now, there are there is another limitation to these uh, systems. And a lot of them will have a certain voltage rating, which might, uh, will be 12 to 40 volts or 12 to 60 volts, you know, that sort of thing. And again, when you're, when you, if you're shopping for one of these, you've got, you should check all those numbers because it's gonna make or break your system. Yeah, and it's nothing like this. We will come back to this, you know, <laughs> in a minute here. But, but that's gonna make or break whether that power station is gonna be any good to you or it will be able to function the way you want it to. The big thing is this, that for storage alone with the power stations right now, just a single power stations, whether it be the 600 like this or the 2000 like the uh, OOPS system I have, they can't compete with this but look at the physical size this thing has to be you know I, as i like to say nailed in place and that's the end of it you know it's not going anywhere this thing is portable so the beauty of this thing is you can just run it someplace with a if you have portable uh solar panels you can charge it up and have power great but it's limited to storage it's limited to how much power it can supply this one can only supply 600 watts and even if it can supply 2,000 watts, again, you're still looking at maybe an hour or something. You know, you're not going to be able to drain the system very long for very far. And then you have that recharge situation where it's limited. So there's a lot of things going on with these uh, solar generators or power stations, as they like to call them. And I think they're great. Uh, I've got right now, I think, 11 or 12 of them around here right now. Uh, when we had a hurricane in July, we survived in the, on these things. Uh, and also this system here carried the big load of the house, the main, the main problems in the home. This was what was carrying us uh, through three and a half days. So yeah, you know, credit to this thing. No power station I have could do that because they would drain in anywhere from four to six hours for the same amount of power. And then it would take a day or maybe even more than a day to recharge them, which was like, you know, that's a losing proposition right there. So good and bad, yeah. Yeah, so i uh, tried to do some exp basic explanation. One of the questions that came in this morning, as a matter of fact, was do you need a controller like that to operate a system such as a Jackery, or in this case, this one here? And obviously the absolute answer is no. You know, you just absolutely bring your solar directly to your power station or your solar generator. You don't need the, any of this stuff, theoretically. Now, I'm gonna talk about the difference because I wanna show you what this system here is capable of as opposed to a solar generator or power station. Like I said, small, medium, easy, light power, very expensive, very pricey. So, you know, you get your wallet out and be shocked because they cost a lot of money. This system here is, uh, at least at this time, is under $1,000. And there's no way you can do five kilowatts under $1,000, but yes, I did, you know, I bought cheap. <laughs> I've got my panels up top and this controller. Now this controller, I'm gonna provide you a link in the description below where you can find this, but I, I, I can't recommend it. It's just, I bought it and I'm kind of like shocked. It works, it works fine. It's working great, matter of fact. I'm not having any issues with it. So it's like, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's, it's doing its job. But uh, here's the thing and here, just these numbers are gonna, might be sound baffling a little bit, but let's talk about solar power coming in. Because we talked about something like this power station where it only allows 400 watts in, okay? And up to a certain voltage. Yeah, the fan just went off on the uh, on this, so 
cooling fan. It hopefully it'll uh, I'll I'll try to use some isolation software to remove some of that noise so you don't guys don't have to listen to that, you know. Uh, this one here is rated at 100 amps, but the input side from the solar can be up to 100 volts. Yeah, I know what you're seeing here. We'll come back to that in a second, but up to 100 volts at a, and up to 100 amps. That means technically, and I'm gonna talk in wattage, of course, that means that system can handle up to a 10,000 watt system. I don't know again if I would recommend that, but you know, it'll, it'll allow up to 10,000 watts. So it's one of the reasons I did purchase this was it would future proof itself that I could expand and expand, add more panels, add more batteries, whatever I want to do. And I wouldn't have to worry about uh, a charge controller for the time being. Uh, this is really a cheap model. It's not Bluetooth. It don't have any of that, you know, ding dong, ringy, ringy bell uh, stuff with it. It's just very basic. But it is an MPPT system, which is what you want when you're looking at uh, solar. That's the preferred situation uh, so they tell me so yeah and i agree i technically it is but uh now on the battery side we can have 12 volt 24 36 and 48 volt systems and it automatically figures out you know what type of battery system you have as to what it's going to try to maintain for you uh and again that's you know that's kind of cool but i i don't necessarily i don't know if i like the auto system or not. i think i do because uh, I wouldn't want to have the system and have it set up with the wrong number of, you know, wrong voltage to the batteries or something. That that could create, create a mess. The fan went off again. But, so for the low dollars, uh, for $1,000 or whatever, we have this huge, strong 5 kilowatt system, expandable to 10,000 watts, which again, I'm still, you know. And so it's 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 inexpensive really and it's totally it's not portable it's just not portable uh you know maybe you put wheels on a cart and haul the whole thing around <laughs> now there is one limitation here and that's the uh, size of the uh the inverter here i really would like a 2000 watt with a 4000 watt uh maximum uh inverter i have one here i tested it 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 didn't go past 2000 it didn't go past uh, about 1500 watts it would just kick uh, kick off and i realized it was uh, the manufacturer kind of lied they had uh multiple outputs and each output was rated at like a thousand watts so therefore it could take a 4000 surge 2000 watts so it meant it's only good for like 500 watts per outlet it was like if you get into the specs it was like this thing's a ripoff to the cost to the consumer you know it's a it's a total ripoff but uh, i would like to have that now in order to do that uh because i don't like a lot of current because current is heat i would go with this system here i would go with a 48 watt sys setup so in other words these would all be a series 12 volts each and this would be a 48 watt system which is the max i can handle with this particular controller and at 48 volts, that would then I would get a uh, an inverter that's 48 volt to 110 volt at say 2,000 watt with a 4,000 watt surge, something along one of that line. Very doable, and uh, the inverter would be the most expensive part. That would that would definitely knock the whole system over a thousand dollars invested. But that inverter would cost some coin, and I'd like to have a really good inverter not just this is just a cheap again just a cheap one from um, amazon and the only reason i bought it at the time was because it has a led readout here that allows me to maintain and take a look at the voltage over at the system that sort of thing and it was hoping that i could show you guys whenever we're you know doing some show stuff here we'll be like wow there there it is it's, you know it's a 13.9 14 volts we've had a load on this thing all morning so we're still almost totally fully charged on these we're, we're not even putting a dent in this thing and I'm, I'm running i guess about 48 volts of light or something in here right now that's the big deal with the controller though that's this is the sort of system you need a charge controller on it power generator like this or uh, solar generator whatever power station whatever you want to call it doesn't need a doesn't need anything just bring the solar panels to it plug it in and away you go but Keep in mind, voltage from the panels has got to be below the maximum of whatever the setting is for this. Or whatever, you know, whether it be Jackery, uh, Eagle Flow, uh, Blue Yeti, 
All Powers. Uh, oh, there's so many brand names out there, and I, I know I'm forgetting a half a dozen of them easily. But all of them have a certain voltage with you know a range. Oh, uh, I have a VDL uh, system here that's uh, I think 2400 watt. Wow, you know, but that'll only last for an hour. And it does allow in, uh, I believe it's, I think that system allows in up to a thousand watts, which again is for a power station, that is not bad. That's what makes that VDL station a little more interesting compared with something like this, where it only allows 400, the VDL will allow up to a thousand, but the voltage has got to be below a certain point. I, the threshold I think is 60 volts. And again, anytime you go over voltage, most of these systems, in fact, everyone I've tested, will shut off. They just stop and they won't charge. They don't go ding, 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 or let you know that there's a problem. They just simply sit there and go, I'm not charging. And you just start wondering, why is it not charging? You know, and you go into panic mode and then all of a sudden you realize, oh yeah, the voltage. I've got some panels that are in uh, series or something and I've doubled the voltage. Hmm, I'm bringing in 80 volts. It only allows 60. That's why it's not charging. It just it'll just stop, you know, just say, nope, not coming in here. Uh, the best one I think I've seen to date, I think it was, I'm trying to think of the brand name. I can't even think of it right now. I don't have any around right now here either at the shop, but uh, I did have one that would go up to, I think it was uh, 80 volts, which was really good because a lot of my uh, solar panels, and again, let's talk, let's talk solar panels. Let's talk portables with these power stations because that's another topic maybe for another day but let's just talk real quick about that all my uh solar panels that are portable that are outside you know they're just you lay them on the ground you bring power in none of those are 12 volts and a lot of people will think in terms of automobiles rvs oh it's a 12 no they're uh 30 and 40 volt panels all of them and the 30 40 volts is fine for something like this but You've got to watch what you have again, because I tied I tied some in, in parallel one day, uh, and then I tied two in series and tried to boost to uh, a couple thousand watts or something off all my portables that were outside. Laid them on the driveway. The voltage was just high enough that none of the power stations would work with the system, and I had to go back outside and sort of you know dismantle what I had done. And I had to cut back and reduce. And in fact, I ended up at, uh, I had a pair of 200 waters tied in, uh, I'm going to say series for 400 watts. Then I had a 400 watt system from all powers and put that in parallel together and brought that in. And it was just below threshold enough to, it would, you know, support or power, uh, charge a, a power station or a solar uh, generator. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, you, it's just mind blowing at times. And a lot of people think that you need a 12 volt solar panel, such as what we're talking about here, up on the roof to charge a 12 volt battery or something. And I'm gonna take my head and do one of these. No, you can have 40 volts, 48 volts up on the roof, coming to your control controller, because again, you need a voltage controller. The voltage controller could be charging a 12 volt battery. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's that easy. It's not that bad, but it is confusing to the average person. We're not all electricians or like myself, where I worked as an electrical engineer at one time. We don't all have that the experience, the knowledge, so it can get really confusing really quickly. So yeah, awesome, huh? Hmm. Okay, so we're back over the shop now. Yay! Oh, I got something new, but uh, I want to thank the uh, last fellow that did ask. There was a number of people that asked, but uh, the specific question that came in this morning was uh, whether they needed a controller for from solar panels and stuff to work with like a Jackery. And so I hope that sort of answered the question. I hope it did. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it, it should have. And he's up in, uh, I can't remember the fellow's name, but he's in Montreal or Montreal, uh, Quebec, Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I did some work up there a little bit in uh, the more Montreal area, so I'm a little bit familiar with uh, the gang up that way. Yeah, you know. Um, got something new in this week. Uh, it was handed over to me from, I guess it came from a yard sale, really not sure. The fellow couldn't use it, didn't know much about it, so he handed it over, but 
Yeah, it's sitting up there in that top corner. It's a Heath Kit power supply. It works. And it's got a lot of tubes in it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I, I could have a whole collection of Heath Kit stuff. That would be just fine with me. I, I like the old Heath Kit. It's pretty, that's really old because, like I said, it has tubes. <laughs> I think Heathkit was more, well, they started to go, I guess, more towards electronics, but they were the IKEA of electronics in my day. You went to Heathkit because you were willing to save a little bit of money that you would build your own, you know, stereo amp or ham radio, power supply, whatever it was you needed. And they had a 300 watt guitar amplifier that I actually owned at one time, and man, that, that thing was amazing. It's a screamer. <laughs> Oh man, where were we? Oh jeez, yeah. Back to nostalgic times. The uh, if you have more questions about solar, I would say ask somebody else. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but it's I will try to answer. There is some really. This is what disturbs me. Is uh, doing this today even was kind of like you know what? There is a lot of great information and programs on YouTube about solar power and uh, you know solar generators and power stations whatever one of the differences I thought there should be in the industry so I'll just I'll put my nickel out there for it but I think a power station should have uh, a situation where it cannot be used with solar power at the same time in other words you can drain from it or you can charge it with solar but you can't do both at the same time where if you had a solar generator uh, type station system that should be allowed to bring in solar power and you should be able to plug in and put a load on at the same time that to me would be should be the difference but like I said the industry is pretty flimsy on that right now and I I think that's where it should go but just just saying <laughs> in the meantime I need to really get out of here but thank you so much for watching coffee and tools please like share subscribe I don't know if there's a notice bell down there anymore. Oh, when I say subscribe, I think the subscribe name flashes or so. I don't know. I'll have to check that myself and see what it's doing. I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out.